Hello everyone, this is Talk Time with Cynthia. I'm coming today. Um, I'm going to be continuing to read out of um, my book that I've been reading. Um, I guess you guys have seen my, the uh, videos that I've done already. And the name of the book is... Um, The Black Tax, The Cost of Being Black in America, and it's by Sean D. Rochester. Uh, just trying to make it so you guys can see what it, what, what the book is. Okay? So now, I always like to say at the beginning of the read, so there's no misunderstanding. I try to clear up the misunderstanding, because the book is really, uh, it's a strong book. And it says a lot of things that we kind of look away from and we don't want to visit. But I think that it's important for us to visit so that uh, we can become better as a, as a city, community, town, nation, um, state, world. You know what I mean? So, because, I mean... I think these are some things that, that we've swept under the rug. And just, not just uh, black tax, but tax, uh, tax that's being put against every, every race, uh, other races. I'm just saying other races other than, you know. Well, I don't want to say uh, Caucasian because I think sometimes they have their own tax that they're not even aware of. So I just really feel like if we... Um, um, address some things that's been done to get and figure out how we got to where we are, then I think that um, moving forward, it'll be beneficial. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and start my my uh chap my reading okay so um the title of this is, we're still on part one i'm a slow reader so just let you guys know um so um i'm still in part one and the title within the next title within part one is the black tax is pervasive Okay, um, so let me go ahead and read because I, I keep talking. So let me go ahead and read. It says, the research is clear. With almost six out of every ten Americans having anti-black attitudes and almost seven out of ten having an unconscious uh, preference for white people over black people, there is indeed a substantial bias against black Americans. Um, that bias manifests itself as a tax that extracts billions of dollars worth of financial resources from African American households and dramatically reduces those households ability to leave a significant legacy so that's what we want to do y'all we want to leave our family legacies right then it says in the housing market we've seen that if you're black you're more likely be told about uh it's yeah about fewer Homes and shown fewer homes when you are looking for a home. You're also more, and that's number one. Number two, you're also more likely to be treated as if your credit worthiness is substantially lower than it actually is if you have an African American sounding name. Number three, you are 60, I'm going to put it over here. You are 60% more likely to be turned down for a loan than whites with similar characteristics. Number four, 
you are three times more likely to receive a higher price loan than your white counterpart with the same credit risks. Number five, your home uh, could end up being worth 18% less than otherwise should if you live in an area where the black population is more than 10% of the total population. For a home purchased by an African American for 450000 the increased interest rate, fees, and the long-term uh, quality appreciate no equity sorry appreciation gap would cost an additional three hundred and forty five thousand over thirty years for black Americans the equity appreciation gap alone could be reducing their real estate holding by three hundred and 17 billions with a B. <laughs> so we've also seen similar costs to black Americans in the auto market. An African American buyer is more likely to pay. Oh, excuse me, y'all. A higher purchase price. And then it says, um, I want to try to have it so I'm, I'm at least trying to look a little bit at the camera. I, I hate doing out to the side, but this is what I have for the moment, guys, and I do apologize. So it says, number one, a higher purchase price. Number two, higher financing costs. And number three, higher insurance premiums. Even if you have a perfect driving record but live in a black community. Since most people will likely own an, at least seven cars in their lifetimes, this level of discrimination could cost a black buyer up to $70,000 over the course of their life. Given that black American purchase or lease about 5 million cars per year, the combined cost could be up to 10 billion per year in incremental automobile costs. In the online marketing, the mere presence of black skinned or an African American sounding name can lower the value of what vendor vendors are selling by 20% to 35%. In the job market, a resume with an African American sounding name can get 50% fewer callbacks for interviews than the same resume with a white sounding name and requires up to 8 more years of work experience to compensate for the black sounding name. Partners at large law firms will often find a hundred percent more mistakes in legal memos if they believe that the author of the memo is a black lawyer versus when they think the same memo is written by a white lawyer. They will also see less they they will also see less likelihood for future success as a lawyer when the same memo is thought to be written by a black attorney. The consequence of not achieving the position of partner at a large firm because of this kind of bias could cost a black lawyer um, $11 million in lifetime earnings. The earnings gap between black and white software engineers 
and black and black and white um health care executives could cause black employees between four hundred and fifty thousand to uh, one million uh, respectively and despite having less capital to start a business than their white counterparts, black business owners are denied credit more frequently and charge higher interest rate than white owned businesses with the same credit. Researchers have estimated that because of the cost of discrimination in securing loans for homes and businesses, African Americans are losing an estimated one billion in equity over this current generation as compared to their white counterparts. In part one, we explore the concept of the black tax and attempts to um, quali- quantify some of the ways that this tax is driven by conscious and unconscious anti-black biases and how it creates a significant additional financial burden on black American households. The research uh, discusses in this part of the book, um, the research discussed in this part of the book is by no means exhaustive and the industries that were highlighted are but a subset of the market and institutions like the criminal justice, educational and healthcare systems where African Americans are subject to additional financial burdens. <clears throat> and then this is a just a little read here um by the Prince Nicola Nicolo uh Machiavelli Machiavelli. It says men Avenge, avenge themselves for slight offenses, but cannot do so far grave one. One. Mm. Oh, let me re- let me reread that, guys. Men avenge themselves for slight offenses, but cannot do so for grave ones. So the offense one does to a man should be of such that one does not fear revenge for it. Okay. That was that. <clears throat> okay, so now guys, we're on part two. Then it says um historical black tax. And the title in within the in part uh two is the first title is How Did We Get Here? And see that's uh, that's the whole purpose of reading this book is to find out how did we get here. I'm trying to make sure I got stuff in the corner of my mouth, guys. I apologize. Sorry about that. So uh, what we're trying to do, we're trying to find out. Okay. Okay, we, we're just trying to find out how we got here so we could do better, right? Okay, so now it says... Um, in part one, we examine the large and pervasive tax that black Americans face due to the implicit and explicit anti-black biases of their uh, fellow citizens, right? This tax ex- exists in almost every market where people are required to make decisions that affect the price of various goods and services that are consumed by black Americans. Research research shows that it is quite uh, prevalent 
in the housing market, the automotive market, online commerce market, the labor market, and the business financing marketplace. I'm just trying to make sure I hold this because I don't want to. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to make it because I don't want to. Um, I just want y'all to get a good view. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, it says, this begs the following question. Where did this tax come from? Has it always been with us? How is it possible that after 400 years and so much progress progress that over 40 million African Americans only own 2% of America's wealth. In part two, we'll take a closer look at how we got here, but we must first define what we mean by here, right? And then it says, defined as black defined as black america's current state of affair affairs here uh because cause um here cause uh be character oh here could be characterized in a number of different ways um Education, health, business, criminal justice, and uh, politics. But for our purposes, um, we will look at the economic or economic factors that impact Black Americans' ability to leave a substantial financial legacy for future generations. A few uh, frightening facts to consider. First one, white households uh, are far wealthier than black households on every level. A, the average mean white household has eight times more net uh, wealth than the average black household. The average wealth of the top 5% of white Americans uh, households is seven times more than the average of the top 5% of black households. The average um, wealth of the top 1% of white American household is six times more than the average wealth of the top 1% of black households. Um, then it says, in number two, it says, White Americans are significantly more likely to receive an inheritance, and when they do, those inheritances are vastly larger and more likely to increase their wealth profile. The uh, children of uh, baby boomers are about to receive 30 trillion of inheritance over the next seven, several years. A. White have five times more likely to uh, get an inheritance than African Americans. I mean, R five times. Sorry, guys. And then it says the average white inheritance is, and this is B, the average white 
our inheritance is 10 times larger than the average uh, African American inheritance. And C, 91% of the average um, white inheritance goes to increase white versus just 20% for African, I mean, wealth, to increase wealth versus uh, just 20% for African Americans. Okay, so then the next one is um, white households have far more business uh, qua, qua, equity sorry, than black households. And it's, it's A, wealthy white Americans are four times more likely to have business equity than wealthy African Americans. B. The business equity of wealth, white Americans is seven times larger than wealthy African Americans. Uh, it's 468,000 versus 65,000. So that's like a big gap, guys. And then the next one is white households have a far a far higher portion of high income earn earners and far lower portions of household in um, par poverty. A. White Americans are over represented in almost all high income occupations and underrepresented in almost all low-income occupations. B. Black Americans are chronically overrepresented uh, in low-income occupations and significantly underrepresented in almost all high-income um, occupations. To better understand how African Americans could own such a small portion of Americans' wealth after being in America for hundreds of years, we have to go back to the period of chattel slavery and examine the economic consequences of the anti-black discriminatory um, forces that have hindered black economic development from emancipation to the present day. We'll uh, look at what uh, researchers say about the economic costs that enslaved uh, people, newly freed people and this descendants of enslaved people bore during those times. Those costs to the extent that they existed would clearly be a tax. A black or I mean on black people and we will use data from various researchers, books, articles and government statistics to attempt to understand the size, the scope, and the far-reaching ramification of the tax. So, so it says, um, and this is an, another title here, and this is going to be our last title for the day, guys, um, because my, um, my time is kind of running for the length of time that I want to do this particular video for. Then it says, this title is, um, Black Tax from 1619 to 1890, From Slavery to Emancipation. And it reads, The first 20 or so African captives arrived in Jamestown, Virginia, and uh, 1619. 
they were originally transported by a slave ship from what is modern day Angelo Angelo to Jamestown and forced into slavery. This marked the beginning of slavery as a practice and institution in colonial America. The slave uh, population in the in 1619 grew from approximately 20 people to a population in 1619. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, re I'm rereading, guys. Let me, let me read this part over. The slave population in 1619 uh, grew from approximately 20 people to a population of 700,000 slaves by the time of the first U.S. census in 1790. So it, it grew pretty fast to 2 million in 1830 and then to approximately 4 million by 1860. During that time, America grew from a series of small colonies to a massive independent uh, country that produced the most valuable commodity in the world, raw cotton, fueled by abundant credit, limitless, cheap, fertile, fertile land, and an ever-increasing supply of enslaved labor, which is free labor. Um... Uh, of enslaved uh, labor, African, I mean, sorry, American became um, extraordinarily wealthy and powerful and accumulated enough uh, capital to uh, become the greatest uh, beneficiary of the indus industrial age. The largest appropriation of land that the world has ever seen, combined with the almost complete extinction of tens of millions of indigenous people, argument, ar argumented by the most brutal and uh, restri restrictive form of slavery that has ever existed, set the balance. Mm. Sorry, guys. Ooh, 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 ooh. Trying to get it right. Trying to get it right, y'all. Be patient with me, okay? Because I'm sitting in my car, so I'm just trying to get this right. Let me let me cut us off and I'll come back. Argued by the most brutal and restrictive form of slavery that has ever existed, set the foundation for the greatest accumulation of wealth in the history of the world. To get a sense of the value of slave to the American economy, consider that in 1860 the value of America's 4 million slaves counted uh, for 16% to 20% of all U.S. wealth or one of or one to two years of national income. The total U.S. wealth in uh, 2016 was about $85 trillion. The value of slaves at a function of U.S. wealth in 2016 would be the equivalent of $14 trillion to $17 trillion 
or about 15.5 trillion, the U.S. national income in 2016 was 19 trillion. The value of slaves as a fun, uh, function of U.S. national income in 2016 would have the equivalent of 19 trillion to 38 trillion, or about 28 tri uh, 28.5 trillion. The average of these estimate estimates is uh, 22 trillion, which represents the equivalent present value of the future net earning that those slaves would provide to their masters in 2016. Today, the combined net worth of the, turning the page, is the wealth of the more than 40 million African Americans is currently 1.5 trillion. Then it says this means that 4 million slaves in 1860 had an equivalent economic value that is about five about 15 times more than the net uh, worth of 40 plus million black americans uh 152 years later 152 years later guys um since slavery by definition is a hundred percent tax on all labor produced by a by a slave it is a pre, uh, imperative that we understand that understand the size of the uh, tax imposed on enslaved people in terms of their un compensated labor prior to emancipation. Okay, some researchers have estimated that the value of the labor extracted from enslaved African Africans was up to twenty four trillion and others up to ninety seven trillion. Taking Taking a, an average of these estimates yields a conservative valuation of up to 50 trillion, which is the effective size of tax imposed on black people between 1619 and 1860. These estimates do not include um, any cost associated with the unimaginable pain and suffering, murder, murder, rape, I mean murder, rape, torture, uh, separation of families, denied in, in, in entrepreneurial, uh, enterprise, denial of education, theft of inventions and intellectual property, denial of freedom and the right to pursue happiness, um, that accompany the daily life of a slave over the course of 17 generations. By the way, a trillion is a hundred billion. So we are telling, we are talking about a considerable amount in calcul, incalculable sum of money extracted from enslaved Africans that created extraordinary our wealth for this country and for white America, white America that was never recouped. 
um, by African Americans. Then at the bottom in a small box right here, let me show you. So right there. Come on. Usually my camera will um focus it for me. I guess it's not gonna focus it for me today. So any so anyway, this is what it reads. It says the black tax. Then it says the value of slaves in eighteen sixty twenty two trillion dollars. And then it says the value of uncompensated labor for from sixteen nineteen to eighteen sixty five. Uh, up to 50 trillion so that was a lot of money guys so um i know this is a lot of past 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 but that's so we can head toward our future right we gotta figure out the past and what happened in the past so we can go ahead and just reunite more into the future and i would like to say that we as a black america and I'm not saying all, just like on any race or whatever. We are willing to move forward, right? Um, uh, even though we might be within our rights to feel like we have a right to hold grudges or whatever, but what does that accomplish? Nothing, right? So, but we are, we are willing, a lot of us are willing to just not look past, but fi figure out how we got here because I just feel like some of us don't know so it's a lot that that we don't know because we a lot that we wasn't allowed to know but start to know your your past so you can head to your future right so anyway so I, I don't want to um get to um deep into what what I think I just want to give you the, the information in the book is what I want to do so anyway I just want to say thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and um, listening to what I have to say and I really 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 appreciate you guys so so much and um, I, like I said I thank you for my subscribers um, and um, just I um, appreciate you just being interested in what I have to say and to just sit and listen to me and keep showing up time and time again. I say thank you so much. Appreciate you guys so much. And um, I, I want to say uh, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel. Um, don't forget to let your family and your friends know what your girl Cindy is doing. Because, you know, we try to keep it popping over here on the positive side. Uh, Y'all know how we do it over here. We just keep it popping on the positive side. Because the only thing we want over here is love and compassion, peace. And um, unity, and that's what we're looking for over here, guys. So, anyway, I just want to say thank you, and I'll talk to you guys later. And I'm um, um, we're gonna have you another video coming soon. I love you guys. Mm, bye.